The Hippodrome is an extraordinary building. It's been in the epicenter of London's uh, entertainment district for the last 110 years. And every 30 years or so, it's been reinvented. It's gone from the elephants to the Folly Bergère, to the talk of the town, to Stringfellows, and this is just the next level for the building. When you've got people from the bomb squad sitting there waiting to find an unexploded bomb, you panic. It was originally built you know, as, a, as an entertainment complex um, and, and functioned like that quite well for quite a long time and then started changing its function. When it started changing its function and, and became a theatre and other uses throughout the years, a lot of butchering went on. So there's a lot of um, works being carried out to the building. It's not always good. It's kind of grand design on steroids. When you start digging in the middle of London, there's so many obstacles that you may come across. During the renovation of the Hippodrome, it was just full of weird and wonderful things. Right in the very, very top, what's known as a minstrel's gallery. I mean, that had many stories attached. The first person to ever dive off it into a, it a big pool that was waiting below. Some uh, cyclist actually did it with one leg. I know this sounds stupid, but this is the Hippodrome's history. It's a time warp. It's got a lineage that goes back over 100 years. We saw it in its former glory. And the history of the place is so unique. Charlie Chaplin started his career in the chorus of the Hippodrome. It is a history that's consistently been about innovation, entertainment, joy, excitement. The idea that polar bears had actually been in there was just too much for me. Real polar bears. Elephants performed and swam in the water, and I was told about the wonderful one-legged cyclist who kind of leapt from the top balcony. And then, of course, later, all the great entertainers that were here. 4,000 people crammed into the Hippodrome that afternoon. When Houdini took the stage, the crowd gave a standing ovation before he'd started. It got to 55 minutes. Houdini came out, still not out of the cuffs. He asked to be, uh, if he could be released from the handcuffs for a while, uh, just to get his coat off. His coat was hurting him. Um, the Mirror Report said no. Houdini then got a penknife out of his waistcoat pocket flipped the coat over his head and actually cut the coat into bits using the penknife in his mouth. So the crowd went wild at this point. So he went back inside. An hour and 10, Houdini emerged and he got out. He was holding up the handcuffs. The crowd went crazy. Of course, one of the big, big changes of the Epidrome was the invention of the talk of the town. It had never been done on the scale before. They were spectacular shows. There hadn't been anything like it. We had Shirley Bassey, we had Tom Jones, Sammy Davis Jr. When I did the talk of the town here, uh, Sammy came to see me. He said, I've got to work here. I, I do it in the Sammy Davis. I've got to work here. This place is fantastic. I've got to work the talk of the town. We couldn't believe that somebody had been watching in the audience had come round and was begging to do a, a week or two weeks at the talk of the town when I had finished. But he was bent on doing it, and of course, it happened. Judy Garland, who did her come back here. This is uh, a box with uh, an audio tape of the illegal recording that was made of Judy Garland while she was doing her act here. I think you probably called it contraband. It, it did really cause a bit of a do, and I have to tell you that Bert Rhodes, who was the musical director, was very cross, and there was a rather bad altercation with Miss Garland's husband at the time, and I think he came off rather the worse. This venue is as big a part of show business history as any venue that you can name. My mom would be very, very pleased that they kept the history. I worked in Panto with a girl called Patricia Hall, who was a great principal boy, and she was one of the Cordy Ballet with Audrey Hepburn. And she said, we all hated Audrey Hepburn. So what do you mean, was she a nasty piece of work? She said, no, 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 she wasn't that. She said, but all us girls, we used to go out shopping, she said, on Saturday mornings. We'd come in for the matinee in the afternoon and bring whatever we'd bought. Hats, dresses, scarves, anything, shoes. And Audrey always used to say, can I just try it on? And she used to try on what we bought, and she looked 20 times better than any of us. We hated her. <laughs> The dome, the ceilings, everything, it's beautifully restored. I think it's stunning. I think they've obviously spent a bomb and it looks very good. It still retains that atmosphere of 
old time show business. It's like playing a musical, but you've got young performers coming here. Young audiences are coming here. It's got a new life, another spectacle. Have no hesitation, compunction, reservation in declaring this wonderful, new, refurbished, revitalized, restored, rejuvenated hippodrome open.